what was the single most important case in your career well uh, you are asking me the most <laughs> though i had so so many interesting yeah. cases i think i'll pick uh, one case which uh, happened years ago at sagara police station i was the assistant sp of sagara subdivision i used to raid uh, gambling dens and i used to catch smugglers i used to catch uh, rowdies and what not and one day in the if in the afternoon one man from a village came and met me and said sir tonight smuggling of body is going to take place but i cannot tell you in which direction on which road etc but this much i can tell you and i said okay i'll take action in my imagination that smuggling i thought was going to take place somewhere towards uh, uh, darwar in between the border of uh, simoga and the border of uh, darwar and so i said i'll take action and when i came home i found my 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 first daughter uh who was just uh, not even one very sick with high temperature then i said to myself well this is the condition of my child and what shall i do with that kind of information which i said i'll take action on uh so then i was in trouble but i said to myself i have said to that informant i will take action and since i have said that i will have to take action i cannot uh, postpone or go back from my my commitment to him i didn't know that villager i where has he come from i don't know what is his name i don't know but when i said i will take action i said to myself i have to take it so time went on it was nearing midnight then i said to myself i said to my wife i saw her putting uh handkerchief with uh, water pad uh, were padding her her head like this trying to make the baby cool because of high temperature so when i said to my wife that i am going out for uh, important work she said how can you do that you are seeing the condition of this baby if any worst thing happens tomorrow uh, in your absence what can i do what shall i do i don't know the language i don't know the people what is this you're doing i said god will be with you nothing will happen i left however i had my 9 mm pistol with uh, 12 bullets in it and and uh, i went down to the road i saw one number store car park on the road side i banged the door and i said that, uh, to the driver who came out that i wanted his car so i sat in the car and i had one orderly constable who was supposed to be on duty at my residence that night to help my wife in whatever way she needed help i took away that constable also with me and so i just said to the driver go in this direction he went and after about uh, one and a half hours we reached the border of darwar and shimoga so i stopped at the check gate for a check gate was there so the civilian driver was a, a very short fellow and when it comes to fight he was so the <coughs> we reached the gate and i said okay let's wait here <coughs> we waited for vehicle sound to to be heard at 3 o'clock 4 o'clock 
no sound came. And at 4.30, I started hearing the sound of a vehicle. So I was waiting for that to come. That area was very dark, so it was drizzling also. And that was an ideal place for committing a murder, if you want to, because nobody would be there to, to see you committing a murder. And at 4.30, the, the sound of the vehicle I heard becoming in louder and louder. And then one white ambassador appeared. In the headlight of the ambassador, they saw me coming and standing in the center of the road, holding my 9mm pistol towards the vehicle, shouting, you stop, you stop, here is my gun. I said, you stop. <clears throat> they did not dare to run over me, uh, so they stopped. Six people, including the driver, started coming out from the car. And I said, you stay on. Don't come out. You'll be there. Otherwise, I'll shoot you. So they went back. And then I came to closer to the car, and I snatched away the car key. And then it was a question of how to manage these six people. I had not brought handcuffs to handcuff them. Yes. I had not brought any kind of device, string or something to tie them up in the back, nothing. One of them was having a dupata, so I tore into pieces and uh, I told my that orderly fellow to tie everyone tightly in the back, the hands, the hands of everyone to tie in the back. Uh, so one by one I pushed them inside the car with instruction not to talk, not to look right and left, but just to look down and see that they don't misbehave. As soon as I finished my tying them up, a lorry, big lorry, Leyland lorry came. That was a time when smuggling of food grain was uh, enforced in the state of Karnataka. And those people were uh, smuggling out this food grain uh, from Simoga towards Kerala. So that night when I, when I saw this Leyland lorry coming, I saw two muscle men also mm -hmm. seated in the uh, cabin. Those muscle men were to lift the bags quickly and dump it in a, in a pointed place and then the, the vehicle to disappear quickly, kind of. So those muscle man, coolie kind of people, I did the same thing which I had done to other fellows. I tied them up behind in uh, their, hand, their hands. So I put uh, these people as they are, and the lorry, now how many, six, seven, eight, including these two lorries, I mean two, 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 two uh, coolies. Eight people plus, plus uh, my driver, no, my, my, my constable. So I pushed them inside and I put them in the middle and then next to that is the, the lorry and behind that I, I drove the car which I brought, the private car. So went to Soraba police station, Bangara Pass uh, police station. And there I put them in a lockup and started pros uh, uh, the proceedings of arresting them and, and all that. So that night it was a question of six, seven, eight, nine, nine of them and myself. Here, as I told you, a civilian driver was very, very weak and uh, he was nothing for fight and also the constable. But my pistol, I had. I could have killed three or four of them. If they wanted to run over me, they can do that. But they didn't have the courage to do that. 
from where that courage had come to me, I used to wonder. And also not bothering about my family, uh, my personal matter, that is my family, that was in critical situation. And more concerned about my duty, that is catching smugglers, seizing their goods. So between these two, my public duty was more important than my personal uh, matter. This is where success normally comes to anybody when they forget about their, themselves, but do the needful thing for the responsibility uh, that they had taken. Uh, so, this I think in terms of uh, giving priority to your duty as a public servant, in terms of uh, leaving the matter of your family to God, Many people don't leave even that matter with God, but they'll just uh, behave in one way or the other. So that, in that sense, I thought that was a very rare and uh, risky kind of uh, experience I had, I had had. And so that's it.